After the game, I thought the most interesting you said was, we're bowl eligible, now we want to get to a better bowl. Yeah, I mean, I think, I th I think the whole goal every year is, you know, one of the goals is you want to you wanna get to a bowl game, right? And I guess my message was, we want to win more games. I guess that's what I was trying to say, Rich. Yeah. It's not, all right, we just won six games, now we're content. I mean, now the object is, I mean, we got to get better, we got to win more games. And I guess that's the message that I was trying to get my point across. Any bowl game we go to, we'll be thrilled and go do our best and respect the bowl that chooses us. Um, but let's go after the best possible one we can get to and win the most games that we possibly can. And that will start this week by, by trying to beat Virginia Tech. To that point, sort of, um, there was a lot of half talk after the game. And you've always preached, you know, day, day, day by day. Do you want them kind of looking at, to have had that whole thing and, and talking about it? Or um, did you have to kind of talk to them about that? I want our guys to focus on going 1-0. and At the same time, you're in November and you still got a chance um, to accomplish a lot of great things. And I think that is important, right? I'd be crazy to think that our guys aren't paying attention to what's going on around the league. And I'd be disappointed if our guys didn't have goals that were bigger than just making a bowl game. When you start one and three, um, you start focusing on winning one game at a time and pouring everything you can into that game. And we started to do that after the Louisville game. And that's kind of been our team mantra right now. Um, but to go in November and still have a chance to accomplish other goals, I think it's really important. Um, I think it's important for our team. I think it's important for our staff. I think it's important to the BC fans and the students. Um, there's some excitement now, and you know we'll we'll, um, we'll do everything we can to, to get back into that mindset. And we did yesterday, and we'll throw everything we can at Virginia Tech. And hopefully, you know, I said it. I think I said it after the Virginia win. We're just going to try to keep stacking them and stacking them and stacking them, and then at the end of the season, see how many we can get. It's been five in a row, which a credit to our team. Um, and I keep saying it, it, it's hard to win five in a row because there's a consistency element. And it's not about how many you win by. It's about trying to stay consistent each week, playing good football, um, making less mistakes, mistakes each week, executing at a higher level, and figuring out how to win. And when you watch football at all levels, a lot of times there's drop off after a win or two. And you have a bad day. And even when we haven't played our best, we've still found a way to win. And I think that's a credit to the staff and to the players. Um, so I'm excited to get back at it. We had a good meeting yesterday. Today's their day off. And then tomorrow will be full speed on to Virginia Tech for our team. A little more about Andre. Just, you know, what went into bringing him in at that point from this crowd? Just what was going through your mind and the offensive staff's mind? And how did he come in? And just obviously to do it was pretty huge for the team and for him. Yeah, well, one, you know, credit to Andre. Andre's been our scout team running back. So he doesn't even go with the offense most of the year. He's down giving the defense a look. And I'm down there a lot of times with the defense. You know, I, I try to split up, but I'm there a lot. And Andre, a lot of times we go live. So Andre's used to playing against a good defense, going to the ground. So technically his games are Tuesday and Wednesday. When he's getting 30 carries, he's getting tackled to the ground. And he's popped some big runs. And he's ran through some tackles. And I made the comment a bunch to the staff, Andre's look good. So the last couple of weeks, we've kind of gotten him away from just being the scout running back, and we've put him a little bit with the offense. So he's starting to learn again and get some reps again. And then all of a sudden, Pat Garwell goes down. Then all of a sudden, Alex Broom goes down. Then all of a sudden, Kai goes down in that game. Um, and we wanted to put a bigger back in because we wanted to kind of run in the interior of that team, especially at the end of the game. And we trusted Andre. and he. Um, he went in earlier in the game. He had a few really nice blocks. He sprung the one where Kai scored. And then he got some really big carries where, I mean, he lowered his shoulder and ran over that guy at the end of the game. And you could see kind of the excitement come out of him on the field, which was awesome. Um, and you can see the excitement from our players. And I think that's the biggest thing right now is when Clint Scales had that interception, the excitement from the team was incredible. When Sam ran the fake punt, the excitement from the team was incredible. When Gilbert, a guy who just got back from surgery, he's been here for two weeks. When he ran down that one screen and made the tackle, guys were going crazy. So guys are really happy for each other on the team right now, and it hasn't always been that way. They've been happy, but this is like real. And someone asked me the question after the game, and it was organic, and it was so awesome to see. So Heinz, you could feel the emotion come out of 
and you could feel his energy on the field. Um, and then in the locker room, it was, I mean, it was, it was a really cool moment. A guy who hasn't played, he's been here for four years. Uh, he's been on scout team every single practice of his career. Hasn't gotten a carry in a game. And then he goes, he's a kid from New York. He goes to play as the team in New York. And he puts a team on his back at the end, runs a guy over and seals the win. Um, I think that represents who this team is right now. And the motto and mantra and coaching cliche of next man up, we all use it. Our team just showed it, right? We've had a lot of guys go down, but guys keep stepping up. And that's a credit to the staff for getting them ready and the players for buying in and locking in and know what they're doing. Um, that was one of the coolest moments that I've had, to be very honest with you, out of all the wins really in my career, to see that with those guys stepping up. That was emotional in the locker room, and it was awesome to see, and that's what's awesome about college football. Um, so a really cool moment, and he deserved it. Now he's going to have to play. Um, you know, hopefully Kai will be back and Alex will be back this week. Um, Cam's around and X is around, but to get a bigger back, and he showed us what he can do, he deserves more opportunity now. So we'll see what he can do. And then more about just the, you know, how the coaches and the players work in tandem to have that the depth come out in practice. Just what are you doing this year that's different from the past? You've talked a bit before, but why do you think that's happening the latest? One, I think we've learned from the past, and I, I, I keep challenging the coaches that throughout the year, it's a long year, guys are going to go down. We've learned that. I think the offensive line was a great, great learning lesson from last year. It's our job as coaches to not complain when guys get injured or make excuses. We need to develop and make sure the next guy is ready to play. And that's easier said than done. I think you got to get the buy-in from the players. Hopefully some of your older guys have stuck around and they've developed and they're older and they've gotten better. Um, but credit the guys on the team to stay focused. I, I'm telling you, I stood here, the plan to win this game, one of the big things I asked, I said, someone in this room is going to have to step up. And that's just how the seasons went. And I had it up on the screen right here. And I said, will it be you? And that's where, and then I said, before we got on the plane in our last walkthrough, I said to the team, I said, someone new is going to get a game ball this week. I don't know who it is. Is it going to be you and will you be ready? So when you're at the hotel and you think you're the third string guy or the fourth string guy, are you going to prepare? Are you going to lock in? Are you going to approach this game like you're the starter? And those kids did. And that's why we're finding a way to win right now. And that's why there's confidence and there's enjoyment and there's excitement. And it takes a lot of hard work. I mean, we're winning a lot of these games in the fourth, but there's consistency and we're getting better. And if you look at the team right now, there's a lot of youth that's starting to show too. And we've lost some of our older guys. And the exciting part about this team is the majority of the guys that were on this field, um, minus a few, they got a lot more football left in them. So we just got to keep building that depth. And I think that takes time. I talked about it in camp. We have more depth. There is more competition. So when guys do go down, you have more players available. And I think over the years, you're going to see more and more of that. I think post-game, you said George Takis, Pat Howell, <clears throat> or Ryan O'Keefe for the of the year. I don't think we'd asked you about them for a while. Are they? Yeah, Pat, Pat had surgery. Um, so he'll be done for the year. Ryan's kind of still deciding on, on, what, on what will come with him. And then George is in a boot right now. Um, and I know he's had some other doctor's appointment. So, so we'll see how it goes there. And just sort of to Trevor's point, um, it feels like this team is having more fun than maybe any team you've had here yet. Why do you think that is? They're closer. They enjoy each other. I think the staff feels the same way. Um, and they're winning. And I think when you start winning, you build confidence. I think when you start winning, you stop worrying about anything else but getting better. And that is in practice. And I think that bleeds over to the game. Um, but it's a close group. And I know I say it a lot, but and you can say what you want. But when you have a team that loves each other and cares about each other and doesn't want to let each other down, it's not about hating the guy that's in front of you. It's about caring so much about the guys that are with you. And that's why you want to win. And I think that's what this team's doing. I didn't make that game about the flag plant. And I didn't make that game about a rivalry. I, I didn't. I mean, I think they talked about it a lot, and I respect the rivalry of anybody that we play. Um, but that's not what our team's about right now. Our team's about taking care of ourselves, trying to win every game that we can, and worrying about ourselves. And I, just like when you guys asked me at UConn, was it, there's no pay, there, that's not how we're approaching things. It's about caring more about who's behind you than who's worrying about who's in front of you. Did your mom stay up? My mom stayed up. 
I think she got mad that I mentioned she was 75 years old. I probably shouldn't have done that. Just say 65. I should have said 60. She looks 65, not 75, so she'll appreciate that. But she did stay up, and she told me she couldn't sleep the rest of the night, and she asked me to please not wait to the fourth anymore. And I told her, whatever it takes, but I told you it'd be a four-quarter game. But thank you for asking. Talk about Elijah Jones now. He's, he's into that ball hawk category right now. Confident, and you can see him. Um, even on the one he intercepted down the sideline in the end zone, rather than kind of like turn into the man and play the man, he immediately turned when he was in good position and he played the ball and he became the wide receiver. I think there's a high level of confidence. I think, what does he have, four or five interceptions right now? He's got to be somewhere up there in the top in the country. And then the one you said, whatever you called it, where he stole it from him, yeah. I mean, that was an incredible play on tape. I mean, the guy caught the ball and he just took it from him. Yeah. I mean, that's a level of confidence. It's a level of concentration. It's focus. We're playing him at nickel. We're playing him at corner. He's, he's, really, he's really had himself a nice, nice year. As a former pro secondary coach, what do they think of a kid that plays four years? He's getting interceptions. I mean, is his stock rising? Yeah, the ball, the ball production's huge. Anytime you go sit in one of those draft rooms and you're with the GM and the head coach, they always want to know, can he take the ball away? Because in that league, you got to get the ball. Yeah. Um, and the way now they'll see him playing confident down the field, uh, winning on those contested catches. The fact that now he's going inside to play nickel is going to speak volumes of his versatility because that's very rare if you can get a guy to go outside and inside. He's playing more physical and he's tackling. Yeah, I definitely think he's rising. Just, I know you're a team-oriented guy, but for you personally, there was obviously a lot of chatter during the, the beginning of the season uh, around you, around the team. To have these guys doing what they did when your message hasn't changed, so what does that mean to you? It means they believe in what my message was. And I asked them to block out the noise. Um, hard to do. I blocked out the noise, and I just put my head down and worked. I believed in the team. I believed in the players we had. I believed in the coaches. Like I said, we, we kind of stumbled out of the blocks. We were trying to find out who we were. I knew we had a good team, and I knew we'd figure it out. We had to clean things up. We had to coach better, and we had to play better, and we've done that. And we still have three games left, so we need, we need to continue on that path right now um, in order to do some more good things.